Hello beautiful people, how are you all doing today? My name is Tochi, if you're seeing my face for the first time and if you're yet to subscribe to my channel, please, it's time to hit that subscribe button, okay? And to all my returning subscribers, guys, you guys are too wonderful. Thank you for your constant support, I really appreciate, thank you. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys the things I found really shocking living in the UK. Like the things that are kind of different from what we are used to so guys this video is not going to be too long because i've actually mentioned some of them in my previous videos you can go and check that out so i just decided to compile all of them in one video just for you guys so sit back relax and enjoy now guys the first thing i found really shocking even in the uk is the smoking habit guys like i'm not even joking like Smoking is actually like a normal thing here. You know, you're walking on the road, you're seeing a man smoking in front of his child, or a woman smoking in front of his child. Like, you will see a man, he's smoking, his wife is smoking, his son is smoking. Like, it's actually nothing to them. You get, you're walking on the streets, you're in the town center, you just see everybody smoking. Sometimes, even when you have to pass somebody's workplace, you just see all of them outside smoking. Like, it's actually nothing to them. Like, it's kind of normal, it's a normal lifestyle. Unlike where we are coming from, that there's this tag of like bad boy or bad girl when you see somebody that is smoking. Some of them that smoke actually even hide from people to smoke. They hide to smoke. And we just few people that actually smoke in public, you know. It's not like a normal, regular thing. But here, guys, it's actually normal to smoke. Like there's nothing wrong with it for them. It's like a normal lifestyle you get. And then they don't smoke inside the house, inside the building. You have to all smoke outside. I think it's actually a law here. You all have to smoke outside. Nobody smokes inside the house or inside the building or something. So guys, their smoking habit is one of the things I actually really found shocking because it's so different from what we're used to, you get? So yeah, that's it. The second shocking thing that I actually discovered is the police. Like you hardly see a policeman on the street. You hardly see a policewoman like walking on the street. It's either they're in their cars or probably they're somewhere where they've been called to intervene in a situation. That's the only time you see a policeman or a woman. Most of the other times, you just see them in their cars, passing and all that. Like there's actually this respect that comes with maybe police uniform or police car or something. Anytime you see them, it actually means that there's something happening or something. Do you get? Unlike where we're coming from, that it's actually normal to see policemen standing on the road, doing roadblock, doing road checks and all that. You know, stopping people when they're traveling and all that. It's actually not happening here. It's, it's not here. In fact, if you're even traveling on the motorway, you really have to be a good driver because you have to be alert because nothing is stopping you on the road. There's nothing blocking you until you get to your destination or you get to your exit junction. That's when you leave the motorway. Nobody's there to check you or stop you, you know, to check your boots, to check your tires, to do all those things. Like, that kind of thing is not here. Do you get, like, you see policemen, you know, controlling traffic and all that? No. All traffic lights are working here and everybody actually obey road signs and road traffics and all that on their own without anybody having to enforce it so that's one of the things i kind of found strange you know because it's so different from what we're used to still talking about the motorway guys because the roads are so good they're so clean you know nothing is hindering you on the road nobody's stopping you. you don't even have anybody to ask for direction the google map here is so reliable guys like you can even be in your house and just okay let me check the direction and the map is telling you that there is an ongoing construction on a particular route that you shouldn't take there or that the road is blocked on this particular route you shouldn't take there you should go through the next route to get like you can be in your house and plan your journey like okay i'm leaving my house by this time google said i'm going to get here at this time and guys at that time or about that time that google says you're going to arrive that's when you would arrive like guys it's so precise and everything like it's really shocking because <laughs> that's not where we're used to because if you want to travel from where we're coming from you have to factor in all the stops you're going to encounter on the road the police is stopping you the uh, federal road safety is stopping you in fact different enforcement agencies are stopping you on the road police checkpoints army checkpoints road safety and then the potholes like the bad road so if you want to travel for maybe a five hour journey just know that you're going to spend like eight or nine hours on the road or even ten hours on the road <laughs> because there are times you get somewhere and then the police will just keep you there for no reason they'll just find one fault with your car and you will stay there for some time begging or either shouting or trying to prove a point or something and then you'll be delayed 
so guys that's another thing i found really surprised in living here the third point i'm talking about is the houses so guys their buildings can be so old like outside but when you go inside it's all white sparkling clean like they really have a good maintenance culture here and then guys their houses can be very small i don't know why they're so conservative you know and the annoying things as there are times when you would actually see a house and then you get to the back of the house the garden is so big so massive and i'll be like ah why didn't you guys just extend this house a little into this garden i'm not saying you don't have your gardens but but then just extend the house a little so that the roofs can actually be bigger or something but no they will just you know give you one small house and then give you one massive garden in fact there are times when the size of the building and the size of the garden might be the same or the garden might even be bigger and you know the Nigerian in me will be like what is all this like what is this what am i doing with this big garden i think it's really a cultural thing for them because they don't joke with their pets and their gardens and all that like you can't even know a rich man by it, you know looking at their houses you know in nigeria now where a man is rich you see him with a massive house House and a big car and then when you see that house because it's standing out you actually know that the owner of that house is rich you get but here it's not like that i think they kind of try to create a balance for everyone the upper class the middle class the lower class like there's a balance for everyone here so you really can't know a rich man just by the kind of house he lives in because those things are kind of regulated here you can only know probably by the money in his bank account or the type of car that he drives because driving a car here is no big deal you know 90% of everybody here can actually afford a car but you know that cars are different so the rich actually goes for the best of cars like that's another thing that's really shocking here like driving cars is actually no big deal here like you can just see a cleaner or somebody packing decks or something and the next minute the person is jumping into his flashy car and you're like ah uh ah -uh, what's happening where are they see this money like there's actually no big deal about cars do you get like, you know now all like where we are coming from if you can afford a car like you are everything you know and then build one small fine house in your area you are everything you are you'll be walking with your shoulders high but here nobody send you like nobody it's just a normal thing like here it's no big deal if you like be driving the latest car car that was just released today today nobody's sending you nobody's seeing you so <laughs> that's it the next point is trekking and bicycle like people here can trek they can trek for the whole world you get and if you're here you would actually learn to start trekking like them and it's actually a good form of exercise i like that part but they can trek a lot here and then owning a bicycle is not a sign of poverty at all like to me it's actually even a good sight to behold i feel like it's actually a way to exercise here because you know they are quite comfortable their system actually makes life quite comfortable for them so having a bicycle or you know cycling is actually a way of exercise for them you know sometimes you just come out you know for school run you know instead of a man to drive his kids to school they will just use their bicycle they'll climb his own the son will climb the daughter will climb you just see them going to school like i actually like that size like most people that own cars actually own bicycles as well it's actually a normal thing for them they're just like owning their dogs and their cats and whatever pets they have you know owning a a pet is actually a thing here like they spend so much on their dogs on their pets you get you might even see somebody in the hospital somebody is sick and you know they're attending to him he's like please you have to distract me today nobody's taking care of my dog there's no one to feed my dog i have to go home they miss me they are hungry they are so lonely you know those kind of things and i'm like uh -huh, what's happening here like they spend so much money taking care of their pets the next point is their farmers like when you see farmers doing their thing here gosh you would want to be a farmer it's so lovely watching them farmers here are very rich people like very rich when you're driving through the countryside and you see those big houses they're actually owned by farmers in their farm like they build their houses close to their farms and you see their machines you know all the equipment they need for their farming when you actually see them like it's so beautiful farmers here are actually rich people like you will not see a dirty farmer you know where we're coming from that everybody's going to farm they come back all looking tata looking dirty and all that but here farmers don't look dirty in their farms even when they are in their farms doing that thing you will hardly see anyone who's looking tattered or wearing rats to farm no <laughs> like the way they farm with their equipment and everything like you really admire them and you want to be a farmer 
so yeah that's another shocking thing that i discovered and that is so different from what we are used to so guys the next point is that contactless payment is a thing here okay like once you go to the supermarket after shopping you just tap the machine and that's it you just tap your card on the machine and that's it the only time you have to slot in your card and put in your pin is actually when you buy above a particular amount of money which is actually very good because when someone steals your card there's a limit to what the person can do with your card without your pin by the time the person does the first swipe and you get the alert you'd have called your bank to actually block the account so yeah that's it and then talking about shopping okay they don't give nylons here you, you know like when you go to the supermarket in nigeria to shop and buy everything they give you a nylon to pack everything you have bought here it's not like that uh -uh. you actually go to the supermarket with your bags like always remember Remember to take your own bag to the supermarket, else you have to buy a bag there. Of course, in Nigeria, me will not want to always pay for bags. I actually always remember to go to the store with my own nylon from the house. And then still on that point, guys, you can actually go into the supermarket with the things that you bought from another store. Like they don't have to search you or give you a locker to lock in your bags and go in with the keys. No, you know that's what we are used to in Nigeria. Here, you can actually go into a store with your bag and it's fine. The next point is drinking water. They actually drink their tap water here. And most Nigerians, because they're not used to drinking tap water, always buy their bottled water and all that. But the water is actually really nice. You get that's what they drink. And of course, for them to drink it, it means like it's nice, it's safe. When I was actually pregnant, guys, I enjoyed drinking the water because it's usually chill. Like, I like to run it for some time before drinking it. So it's usually very chill. I enjoy it. But now, after having my baby, I hardly take it. I prefer taking the bottled water. <laughs> but the water is actually safe. There's nothing wrong with it. Another culture shock, like this one is so shocking, is the fact that you hardly hear car horns here. Like, if you're a novice, like you're driving a car for the first time, you can actually drive your car for a long time without knowing where the car horn is. Because you rarely use it. You might even never use it. Another shocking thing that I discovered here is the fact that some of them don't know how to write English. Because they speak English, English is their language, of course. You expect them to write this very well, yeah? But no, some of them don't even know how to write correct English. It shocked you, right? Yeah, that was how I was also shocked when I discovered it. Like, some of them don't really know how to write English. And most of them are not bothered to go to school because, you know, the system has made everything so comfortable for them. They don't see any reason to go to school and, you know, further their education and all that. So, those kind of people don't really know how to write correct English. Sometimes, when we have to do a report or something, and I'm seeing what these people are writing, and I'm like, uh-uh, uh-uh. I thought you were the owners of this English language. What's going on here? So, yeah, that's it. The next point is their love for tea and chocolate. In fact, like their events are not complete without tea or chocolate. You know when someone visits you and you're looking for something to serve your guest, there's this tea or chocolate and that's it. You know, it's not really something that we're so used to, you get. So, yeah. And then the next thing is how organized your system is, okay? Like, when you see it, you're just like, okay, when are we going to get here? You can stay in your house and open a bank account. You can stay in your house and do so many things. There was even something that happened to me recently. Like, one of my Nigerian bank accounts, I had issues with it. I couldn't really receive more than a particular amount of money in the account and then i called the bank and they were like i have to upgrade the account i have to bring utility bill i have to bring that and i told you guys i'm not even in nigeria so how do you expect me to bring utility bill from where they were like yeah that's the policy that's this and i was looking at these people and I was, i'm like i'm going to give you every other thing that you need every other documents that you mentioned here yeah, i have it but for utility bill i don't have it because i don't stay in nigeria they said no that's the policy and i'm like sorry you guys just lost one customer <laughs> and that was it but here yeah, you can't really find that kind of a thing you can't stay in your house and open a bank account and do so many delicate things like so many things that you feel like ah uh ah -uh. You can do so many of those things from your house. The next thing and the last thing I'm talking about today is the PDA, like the public display of affection. Like it's so rampant here, it's so normal. Public display of affection, guys. Like it's so normal, just like smoking. You just see two kids on the road hugging, smooching, kissing. And I'm like, ah uh ah, -uh, what's happening here? Like in Nigeria, people hide to do such things. It's not so common. You get you can't see it, you can't see people on the road doing such things. Like even when you see people in Nigeria that mistakenly are doing such things, of course, one man or woman would have come to tell them, uh uh, you don't have home training. Where are your parents? What are you doing here? You get somebody would have come to caution them, but here everybody might their business like it's nobody's business so they are free to do whatever they want to do or are we going to mention the fact that they call everybody by their names here like it's no big deal no matter your qualification no matter who you are everybody calls you by your name it's no big deal here well, i'm going to stop here so this video will be too long 
So guys, these are some of the shocking things I've actually discovered living in the UK. Please share with me in the comment section the shocking things that you discovered living wherever you are that is outside Nigeria. So that is it for this video guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you like to give it a thumbs up, remember to subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.